Good afternoon. Uh, we're coming up with a valuation today on Apple stock. Uh, one of those things that we are provided oftentimes with is we look at something like Yahoo Finance and it provides with us a bunch of information about that stock. Now what we've learned so far is we've come up with a lot of stuff on uh, basically our Gordon growth model right here, which is our dividend and next period divided by R minus G. Uh, but we haven't really discussed a lot about how we come up with what that required return is. Okay, so we're going to look at this stock right now, and there's a lot of actually a lot of information provided here. Okay, uh, but when we're coming in here and we're trying to figure out and solve and, and, and figure some of these things out, is that we're looking at basically what our current price is. Okay, and we're going to be looking at our dividend next period. So we're looking at our uh, dividend yield right now, which is 2.08. And just as a quick question, is that the dividend D0 or D1? Well, simply put, that is going to be D0, right? That is something that's already happened. It's happened right now, right? So we have to add on to this our growth rate. Now, let's say we just did some analysis and we think that our growth rate is going to be, say, 3%. Okay, we just did some analysis, and that's what we think that Apple stock is going to grow at. Okay. Apple is a ubiquitous stock. A lot of people own Apple. A lot of people own Apple devices. Uh, it's the world's most valuable company according to market capitalization. So we're going to add all this stuff in, right? So we add our growth rate right there, and then we're dividing this, and we're going to have R minus G. So G is at 3%. Now where does the factor come in that's going to go right here that's going to be our discount rate? Okay. What we have to do is we have to use this model right up here. Right. That model right there is cap M. That's going to tell us what our, our return is, our required return on the stock is. Uh, now, one of the models that we historically use is the one right here that uses beta. Okay? That's going to be the closest information that anything in this table here gives you about the value of that stock. Okay? Now, we plug all that stuff in here. We have our risk premium here. We have our risk free rate. And one thing that I do want to make sure is clear is that there is a difference between equity risk premium and the return on the market, right? Sometimes you might see something saying, oh, we have this kind of return on our market, which then we have to subtract off the risk-free rate. However, other times when we're looking at this, it's going to say this is what the equity risk premium is. So we have to be able to, to kind of parse these out, okay? But we're going to be using these numbers right here, which is a risk premium showing of 5% and a risk-free rate of 2.5%. Okay? So we'll come in here and we will solve for the required return on Apple. Okay? And that's given by our risk-free rate of 2.5% plus our beta, which is this amount right here at 0.91. And that's multiplied by our risk premium, which is at 5%. Now, just a general question for you, is this going to have a higher, lower, or about the same required return as holding the overall market? Now, keep in mind that we do have um, the return on the market that's given to us here, right? Remember, it's the risk premium is equal to the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Okay, so if we're given our risk premium at 5% and our risk-free rate is 2.5%, then what is... What's the return on the market? Well, our return on the market is just simply 7.5%. So do we think the return on Apple is going to be higher than or lower than 7.5%? Well, let's solve it and figure it out, okay? So we do the math here, we solve it through, and we come up with a return of 7%, okay? 7.05 to be exact, but we're just going to round it to 7%. Now we see that that rate is lower than the market. We know before even doing the math it's going to be lower than the market because this right here, our beta, is 0.91, right? And 0.91 is less than 1. If we have a beta of 1, that means that this stock is going to mirror the market exactly. It's, when the market goes up by 10%, this stock is also going up by 10%. When it goes down by 5%, it goes down by 5%, okay? So uh, we're given that return there of 7%, so we can just plug that that mess in right in there. Okay, and then we come up with a current price here of $53.56. Huh, right, $53.56. That's a, a little bit less than $132.54, okay? So when we see a number this, this far apart, if, we, if this was a true valuation at $53.56, then we should be looking at this going, 
maybe we shouldn't be holding on to this stock. Maybe Apple's overpriced, you know, and maybe it is, okay? Apple is kind of one of the darling companies right now. It may be very well be overpriced, but we don't know, okay? So one, the next thing we're able to do is we're able to back this in and figure out what the market generally thinks the rate of growth on Apple is, and then we can make another comparison here, okay? The way we can do that is we can set this up by still using this Gordon growth model right here, right? Because we know P0, right? We know it's the 132.54, okay? And that's gonna be equal, and we know what our most recent dividend is, is $2.08, right? And we're trying to figure out what the implicit growth rate of this company is. We know our return is, is 0 0.07, 7% minus G, okay? We can solve this, move this around, multiply both sides, by the 0 0.07 minus G, and then multiply this through over here. And that comes up with 9.24 minus 132.54 G is equal to 2.08 plus 2.08 G. We're gonna add 132.54 to both sides, so we're gonna subtract 208 from both sides, and we'll have 7.16 equals 134.62 G. Divide both sides by 134G, so is G is equal to 5.3%. Okay? So that comes out of the market thinks, generally thinks that Apple is going to grow at 5.3%. Do you think Apple is going to grow that fast? Me personally, I don't think so, but a lot of other people obviously do. Okay? So what you're going to do here is you're going to kind of back this out and, and think about, you know, the relative value of this company, okay? If you think it's gonna grow at this rate, maybe it is worth holding on. If you think it's gonna be growing faster than that, you know, maybe you should, should hold on to it as well, okay? So this is just the basic way that we come up with this valuation. We have that risk factors given to us right here. It's given to us by that beta.